we have five seasons now. We have summer, spring, winter, autumn, and smoke. And the skies turn orange. Uh, it's hard to breathe. And the sunsets are honestly very beautiful. Uh, this It does have a certain uh, apocalyptic beauty to it, I must say. I love it when Ever I'm talking to somebody who thinks like climate change is fake and is older. Cause I just I typically just hit them with this line and they they never talk to me again about it. I just go, you know, when I was a kid, we never used to have smoke in the forecast. And then they know I'm right. They look back at their life, which is you know, three times longer than mine. They know I'm right. And they can't respond. They just can't respond. As if the data isn't enough, all, I mean, a lot of the, like, climate deniers have to rely on anecdotal evidence, which that 100% is. Alright, Ochi, do it. It's apocalyptic, to be sure, but it also carries, it's like, I mean, you guys know my absolute adoration towards Pikmin 2, of the fact that it is set, uh, the fact that it is set in on Earth just kind of sweetens the deal for me. Um, it makes the world so much cooler than it would otherwise be because you know that you are picking up the leftovers of a species that destroyed itself in Pikmin Cannon, right? And left the planet behind or entirely died off. And so there's this melancholic vibe, apocalyptic vibe to the entire game, but that's not what the game is about. And that's what separates it from something like The Last of Us or Fall or like Fallout, uh, where those are about the apocalypse. This is a completely separate story set in the apocalypse, which I find more unique, yes, but also even sadder while being more hopeful. It's a weird feeling. And the season of smoke or ash uh, kind of ignites that in, in me where I see the sun. It's, it's pretty, but you know that like we're, it's because we're killing the world. Um, but there's also this kind of nostalgia towards it at this point for me. I don't know why it's, I shouldn't be nostalgic towards it, but like, I don't know. It's just, it's kind of sad in the way that winter is sad, you know, where plants are dying. Uh, it's getting colder. It's starting to rain and, or di not dying, but hibernating, you know. Um, the trees have fallen from trees and they're bare and sad and, you know, dead. And, I don't know, it strikes the same chords with me, so I, I almost like it. You know, when I saw those glow Pikmin things, uh, an old memory came back to me. Something I'd almost forgotten. Hmm, what kind of memory? I was back at home. One day, out of nowhere, my body started suddenly to glow. It lasted for like three days, I think. Huh. I don't remember that at all. It was probably just a bad dream or something. Not worth digging into any further. I hope he doesn't remember anything else. Ha! Huh. <laughs> I was like, I was wondering about that line because I was like, how would he know? How would he know when that was? That makes no sense. Did they grow up together? And then that line confirms that no, it's because he did it. <laughs> He's the cause. He was experimenting on him. That's great. That's that's great. They threw me for a loop and then pulled me right back in. Man, Jeff really is just doing one thing and calling it a day. You think he's just doing this for a paycheck? To be fair, I, they're all getting paid because of me. So if anything, they're probably cool with it. All right, Louie. Take your giant thing and take this the reward is still the same go get more ingredients i'm still missing some giant bread bug huh i'm not gonna lie of the areas in pikmin 4 this is probably my least favorite one um i i just think uh i don't know why I can't... I think probably because of stuff like this. Where... Everything is a whole thing. Like, to get up onto the couch, you have to do 15 different things. To get anywhere, you have to do 10 different things. It's like... 
it's not simple at all. It doesn't feel like an area. It just feels like a bunch of puzzles. And while that could be cool, I think I can just go to the last floor, right? Yeah, I'll just go to the last floor. It, it doesn't leave me, like, excited to play it. And also, I probably hate it, too, because... Man, I, I, I downgraded from my least favorite to I hate it. I probably don't like it because... It reminds me that they kind of messed up the the Pikmin like lore, and that having a perfectly pristine, um, yeah, they better, they better appreciate that I got those sprouts. It's probably because I don't like the fact that there is a pristine house in Pikmin that isn't underground. Under the underground ones in Pikmin two made sense because like they were shielded from the radiation or whatever, but this one. It's just like a legit pristine house with signs of current people living in it. It's like why. Why did they do this? Do they forget? Like, what's going on? Okay, he's just chilling. Can I use this height advantage? What is it? There you go. That was weird. It only took one, right? It only takes ten? I almost feel like that was a bug. The concept of the hero's hideaway being a house and you have to kind of platform around is something that's been talked about in Pikmin for years. Like, in all of the different, um, like, Nintendo Directs and trailers and stuff, it's been bandied around for years of... That's kind of the, the theme of the game when you're this small. It's sweet. But... Man, does Heroes Hideaway kind of... drop the ball on it. Uh, honestly, I think it would've been really cool if... First and foremost... You had to... the tr uh, It was more treasure-based, and um, a lot of the stuff you had to get was like... It made sense for the area. For example, for example, why are there no GameCube controllers hooked up to a work like an actual GameCube with a copy of Pikmin 2 next to it, which would have been super cool, and you have to carry the GameCube controllers and pull it out of the GameCube, like pull the plug out of it with the Pikmin. That would have been awesome. It would have been a homo an homage to the very beginning of the I mean the series roots in the GameCube era why the area feels like such a chore to go through when it should feel like a joy. It should feel like, oh man, I get to grab the um, the quarters from inside the couch and I have to use yellow Pikmin to dig for them? That's so cool. That makes sense. Why didn't they do something like that? There are just so many clever ways that they could have did it and Hi Hero's Hideaway is none of them. Like, why are there flying contraptions in the Hero's Hideaway? Why are there random wires and trapezes everywhere when it could have been you got to push over this book to go up this this ramp? It could have been cool, and it wasn't. That doesn't matter. Go get more ingredients. I'm still missing some. Sovereign Bullblack. So okay. Now it's getting kind of interesting. Now it's going to start feeling like a boss rush. And where could I find that? Go. Okay. I don't have bombs. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to feel them out right now. Decent damage. Let's let's try this. You know what? I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try a I'm gonna try a Pikmin carrot. I never really tried these in the series. Does it stun him? It does! That's that's pretty good. Come on, join me. Whoa! How many did I lose? I lost 18 Pikmin! I lost more. Man, they did. They put so much respect on the Sovereign Bull Blacks' name. But, buddy, what do you think you're doing? However, run. Cool. Whoa. Whoa, he is jumping a lot. Jump on me. Come on. Okay. Whew. Man, they put. They really made. Oh, wait, he's about to scream. I jumped off in time. Run! Wow, he's actually scary. And I'm rusty. 
Another pick, pick, tick, carrot. Yo. This should do him in. Go. Got him. Oh, that was close. That was close. I'm going to take these because I will probably need them later. Well, we're getting some boss fights. That's kind of cool. Go on, Ochi. 